Hi felters and welcome. Today we are going to make these really quite easy Highland cows. They're an extension of my Highland cow baubles. They've got little tails, they've got no legs, no eyes. So we're going to make that one on the left. I'm working with a company today called Crafty Fibres UK. They're, a, they're based in Bradford, they're quite new and they've sent me some samples. All three of these cows are made with fibres that they sent me. Um, so it's a bit like Christmas for me. I got a, a load of packages. They have 100% recyclable packaging, which is fantastic. Um, you don't often get that, and they've got fast delivery. Uh, the delivery is $1.99, it's really good. And we have got a 10% discount code for all of you. So that will be in the description below, or I'll put it up at the end as well. So it was like Christmas, like I said, opening these up. The fibres are amazing. They are so super, super soft. We've got mixtures of, that one was a Australian wool tops. This one is a Caracal uh, blend. They can blend uh, wools for you as well. If you pull them up, they will make up your own blends. And if you're looking for wools in particular, just call them up and they'll try and source it for you. So they are small family run business. So they're really, really good. So I've got lots of whites, um, ultra fine merino blend there this one is the one we're going to use in the highland cow today because look at that caramel it's so beautiful it's um baby alpaca and it's white fawn and brown um and it's just it's so soft and lovely and i was really impressed with this one again that's a mulberry silk cross i'm going to have to do something with all these whites but um that was a neps which uh, I'm glad I didn't open up completely. I'll do a video on Neps at some point. That was a cashmere uh, blend, I think. And this one was really good because it's a Highland cow color. It's very hard to get a really good Highland cow color. And that was perfect. And this is some of their carded wools. They're adding carded wools slowly. So if you have a look now, I think in six months time, they'll have added a whole load more. But this carded wool was so clean. It was fantastic and a really good white. And then when you're done, you just roll everything up um, and it's in the paper so it stores really well and it's really good for the wool to be in the paper and then you just pop them away. So you need a core wool, you need a brown to cover it, a little bit for the muzzle which is a light beige and then this is what we're using today from Crafty Fibres UK is the white fawn and brown blend and that's going to be the coat colour and um, then you need a pipe cleaner let's get started so we're going to make the body and you could just use a core wool for this i'm using the white new zealand wool like i said it was a really um good white because it's quite hard in the natural wools to get a white color so you're going to do a cylindrical shape um i sort of was looking at it and was thinking it's a bit like the shape of a toilet roll but um, so it's going to be cylindrical so this is going to be the body on the inside and just um work it through a bit it doesn't have to be extremely firm but you do want it to hold its shape and the measurements when this is done it should be about four inches long and then about two inches wide mine was a bit wider so no more than two inches should be fine and then you're going to cover it with um, whatever coat color you're going to have underneath so we'll just do that There we are. Oh, a bit of tea drinking. Sorry about that. All done. So that's firmed up. It's okay. I've got a little bit of uh, faded patches there, but it'll be covered. So I'm not too worried. Next, we're going to do the head. So take a little bit of the brown color, roll it up. Literally, it's almost like a ball to begin with. And then you're going to sort of narrow off one end. So start firming it up. Most of the head isn't going to be visible, so it doesn't have to be really, really neat. But the nose you want to be fairly firm so you can attach the little um, nostril bit to it. So I needed it a bit bigger. I'll do the measurements in a sec for you and show you. There we go, so it's done. And sometimes I literally just squidge it into the shape that you want it in. 
you don't always have to felt it into that shape with the nose so it's about two inches by two inches and then take a little bit of um, a lighter color for the nose whatever you've got you could use the white if you want to um, and then fold the ends under 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 into a circle and then just felt that a bit it's like a little disc pop it on I tend to We'll go close uh, just go around the edge first check that it's level you can again like I said squidge it a bit and move it a bit and then uh, once I'm happy it's level then I go more through the middle of it and then this is the little nostril bit an absolutely tiny amount of wool roll it into a ball and then felt it on it's really simple so do one and then do the other one beside it And then we're going to go on to the ears. So take a section of probably about three or four inches and fold it over. And that gives you the edge of the ear. And then start felting it through and then felt the edges, round them off. I sort of say it's circular, but I guess it's a little bit more oval in a way. And then keep the um, fluffy bit that you're holding on to to help with attaching. And then just very gently felt the edges in a bit mind your fingers when you do that and and that is a very simple ear shape I'm not even putting any colors in the ear and I don't know why this has gone slow-mo but uh, <laughs> it helps so you fold the ear in half and then needle felt it through so that it will stay in half I'm sure quite a few of you have seen my videos so you must know this off by heart but if you're new this is how you keep the ear shape and then you're going to attach it at the back of the head you can play around with with what angle you want it at but remember the horns are going to go over the top when we do them so start felting it through at the back and that will uh, attach the horn the um, ears for you there we are and now we're going to attach the head <laughs> So here we are onto the coat and this is where we're using the baby alpaca blend. Obviously when they, it sounds funny that it's a baby, but it's just like sheep. They just shear alpacas exactly the same like sheep. It's quite normal. I think they do it twice a year. So take a little section of the coat and then you're going to needle felt halfway up the body through the middle. And this is how you're attaching the coat and then we're going to fold it over. So you do a lower section all the way around the Highland Cow. Otherwise, it wouldn't be thick enough if you just went straight to the top bit. So fold it down and look at those colours. They are so beautiful. This, he ends up looking like a little round puff thing or a little round thing that you put your needles in or something when you do all the bottom. They do look a bit silly until they're finished. So you carry on all the way round. And then you do a little bit for the bottom facing backwards because otherwise... They might not have enough of a of a hind quarter, so this helps just uh, plump it up a bit and attach that underneath. Uh, also, notice I'm not on the mat anymore because the mat um, catches the fibres and will rough it up. You've got enough thickness in the body not to hit the table, so do not use the mat. And then this is the back bit. Uh, you go across either side, and then cows have a little top line, so it's good to have that showing. So you do one bit and then another bit. You really don't need much of the wool. Probably about 50 grams would be enough. Um, but if you bought 100, you could do a couple of cows. So needle felt it all through the middle and that keeps it nice and secure. And then smooth it down and underneath. Gives them a little round shape. And then you need to get right in under the neck. 
so if you get right in and under when you fold it down nothing's going to show so here we go he's all been done around the back and you can see the neck is right up and under there so it's nice and close and nothing shows when you fold it down this is the horns so I take the pipe cleaner I folded mine in half and then twist it a bit it's about five inches in, in length because it was a little bit fine your pipe cleaner might be thicker you might not need to and then take some white uh, carded wool and then I start from the middle out because you can control how much you've got at the end I was finding it harder if you try and do the whole thing in one go so you twist it on and then you do lots of rolling and twisting you need a big needle because you might hit the wire uh, like a 36 or a 38 just be very careful and then when it's all done you do the obligatory roll between the hands <laughs> makes it look better um, smooths it all out and then take some of the brown wool and then position where you want them again I was on the mat there and it was already starting to rough up the wool underneath so it's really important don't do it on the mat and needle felt either side of the horn first and that secures it check that it's level and then uh, felt it all in and then this is doing the head so take one bit of the section of wool and you're going to do it to one side of the head so felt halfway through right behind the horns here and one bit goes one side and then the other bit goes the other side you might do this differently but this is the way I do it and then obviously he needs more so you're going to do and you've got a gap behind the head a bit lower down so you're going to fill that up so you take one long bit now I faff around with the wool and make the blends look right because this is going to show so you want it exactly how um, so I evened up some of the brown there and then you want it quite long and then that little bit at the back so your needle felt through right down low so it covers everything up and then those little wispy bits left I just split them either side and put them down the sides but the front bit again you're going to split and put around the nose and and then I had a little bit of fiddling because the shape just looked a little bit it didn't look square enough it looked a bit too high so secure it underneath really gently under there and then I did quite a bit of squidging with this one so next is or last is the tail you don't have to do a tail uh, but I think it makes them look like they're definitely lying down because they've got no legs um, so wrap a bit of the brown round a pipe cleaner give it a little roll then take some of the uh, wool again and you're going to attach it halfway through the middle of the wool but right down the bottom of the tail and it takes a while and you sort of think oh it's not taking it's being a bit annoying um, but it does take eventually and then you fold it over or fold it down and then I wrapped a little bit around the back so it covers up it doesn't have to be perfect all the way around um, and then because it's too long you could leave it long but I trim it down to a little point and that looks a lot more tail like there we go so that is your tail um, and then you just part the wool a little bit very gently and you can pop it in you could do this beforehand but I've had no problem doing it now apart from the fact that I break a needle because I obviously hit the wool I haven't broken a needle for a while but um, I just felt it in and then gently pull it back across and cover it up and there's his cute little tail and I just think the tail does add a bit of detail so here they are um, I think they're gonna do really well at my craft fairs um, they look so cute every time I catch sight of them I'm really happy so Crafty Fibres UK thank you so much for the wool like I said there's a 10% discount code Philippa10 is what you'll put in the checkout and that will get you 10% discount so thanks for watching and see you again soon